Yeah. No, no, no. So what we're looking at here is just some gold sputter on carbon. Um, and the magnification that we're at right now is uh, just some very low magnitude, 6,000x. So that's what we're kind of looking at. And so this is your resolution standard, Dan, that you kind of are used to looking at, right? Yeah. All these little tiny gold, little yeah, tiny speckles. Yeah, yeah. So 6,000x, it's great. So, you know, we can see that. And if we come up a little bit more, you know, so like we're hitting like around, you know, 26,000. Let me just focus mm -hmm. this on this a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let me put something in. Uh, right uh, now, I have one of my samples yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we're going to put, I'm just going to do just a very quick little, you know, show and tell. And then we'll put one of Dan's samples in with a real sample. But this sample that I have in here is, is kind of like an industry standard. And so it's good to look at it. Because Dan has seen the sample many times when I yeah. try to prove to Dan that his microscope is clean, it's working, everything is doing what it should do. This is the sample that we use. It's an industry sample. And so it's gold sputter on carbon. And so the mag there is 26,000x, just to kind of let you know. And, you know, for everybody just looking at it, just, just, to, just to say 26,000x, it's kind of sort of a little bit of a big deal. It's not like a critical, like, oh, my God, 26,000x. Like, Dan's SCM probably tops at around 70,000x, just to give you an idea. Dan has a, an older Amory SCM, and Dan's SCM was brand new. It was about a $200,000 tool, just to kind of give you an idea of what price ranges. So, as you can see, you can see the speckles really nice. They look really nice. And we could actually measure these if we wanted to. We could say, hey, you know, how big is this little guy right here, for instance? Or, or you know, what's the spacing between that little guy or whatever? Great. So, we could do a bunch of stuff like that. No harm, no foul. Um, let me come back out of here and just kind of increase this. So, we're looking at around 100,000x right now. And this is already past Dan's SEM by like 30,000x, just to let you know. And this is, this is on a tabletop, right? What is the surface requirement for this, for the surface finish for, for testing? Doesn't like a just your bench? Yeah. Yeah, 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 just your bench. Yeah. So like when we say, hey, okay, so 99,000 X, and if I was to take a ruler and I was to measure spatial resolution like that, we're talking 19, 19 nanometers. But that's not even like you know. So so I could just kind of continuously zoom up on here. So this is like let me just uh, let me just get it to a little bit of a better area. Here. So, just, every, every time where I left, where I, wherever I left click. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wherever I left click, it centers the stage to that, to motorized stage. So if I left click, it's going to center that part. If I left click there, it centers that part. So it's really a very intuitive microscope to use. Um, let me just pop open the focus window one more time. Let me just, let me just do a little focus in here. Give me one second. It's a roll of the mouse. It's kind of roll the mouse. And then stigmate as well. Stigmate again. And so I um, just wanted to put one more, you know, one more polymer sample here. Yeah. So 140,000 X, let's say, and we can distinguish resolution pellets and we can distinguish spatial resolution, which, which this is like, this is like a very big deal in the industry, just to let you know. At 20,000 X is kind of like a big deal when we were a second ago. This magnification is really, really a big deal. And, and if we go to like even a higher, you know, mag of 247,000 X, that's kind of like what we're doing at the show. And people were kind of like, I, you know, the guy I told you, he didn't believe that we were actually running an SEM, uh, something like this. Because usually this type of magnification, you would need like a field emission microscope, which is the price range of those anywhere from like five to like $800,000. And they're like a huge monstrosity. You have three iron pumps in the gun. It's like this large, huge SEM. But uh, we've got some state of the art technology in our column. It's a completely new design. It's a brand new product. It's, it was introduced at the show just recently. We've got a patent on the photomultiplier tube design. Also, have a patent on the scan coil design of this tool as well. So it's it's really like state of the art, as state of the art as you're going to get. There's nothing else from this small of a package. We're going to just pick this up, put this in my living room, put this at home, put this wherever I want it to be, and pull off a shot like this, which is just 
incredible. Like it's just, just to let you guys know, it just bam, 247,000 X. I mean, Dan could attest to, you know, where you where you normally operating with your SEM? 20,000 X. 20,000 X. That's typically what we would end up using. So 20,000. Let's just lower this down to like you know, let's even go to 40,000 X. You know, which is still like when I told you guys a second ago, you know, 20,000 X is a big deal. But 40,000 X is like an all day long thing. You know, the image just looks beautiful. Um, I'm also developing a new aperture assembly with the SEM because right now I've got the beam totally closed. So picture dead, I have the smallest spot size right now because we have so much signal that I can actually run this and see very nice contrast with the, with the smallest spot size that I can have. And the spot size control, let me just scroll that really quick. This is kind of like, you know, I see stuff. So spot size one right now, Dan, is where I'm. So if I go to spot size 15, look how much signal I gain on this, right? Mm -hmm. So it gets, it gets a ton brighter. So like at base mag and wherever else you'd be looking, um, you know, the image would just look, you know, very, very washed, let's say, right? So it's very, very, it's a very bright image, for instance, right? But we can operate it with a lens closed just because we're picking up that much signal out of this. And so you say, hey, why do we have beam diameter anyway? So when we do x-ray analysis, and that's where Dave will come in, and Dan does x-ray analysis, so you say, okay, what's this area made out of? Well, we'll have another monitor on this just to let you know, and we'll have an EDS system, and we'll acquire a spectra with it, and we'll say, hey, you know, we're looking at, you know, iron, chrome, uh, you know, manganese, nickel. So that's what we're kind of looking at. And then if we, we, we could take control of the microscope and drop in a picture, and now let me just open, and go all files. Again. Okay, so let's say that, you know, let's say that this was the image that we were looking at. That, that's our image that we're having right here, right? We could actually take control of that image and drop it into the, our x-ray analysis program. And that x-ray analysis program is going to be this. And this program Dan has as well. And so here's our sample. That's what we're looking at. You could say, hey, you know what? I'd like to know what this little area is made out of. And immediately, as soon as you do that, as soon as you do that, it tags the location, location number one, it gives you the spectrum for that location. So you can say, okay, that's what that area is. And you can say, you know what, great, I can see what the area is, but what is it actually made out of? And then it'll give you all the concentration, all the atomic number, whatever, whatever you want to look at the percentages, right? And so you could do that. You could also say, you know what, I would like to just do a dot. You know, what, what is that dot right there? Or for that matter, you know, let's move that out of the way. What's that, you know, let's make that live again. And what's, what's this dot over here? Let's just go stop at the window live again. You say, hey, what's this area right here? So this is a lot of a lot of powerful functions that are in the software to actually pull out from what you're looking at to do elemental analysis in various areas. You guys ever seen anything like this before? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I sent wires actually to uh, outside labs. Okay, so you're getting this type of we stuff. Got, we got an inclusion, and uh, we're trying to find out, figure out where is it made out of. Okay, great. So what you also have here too, which is really really powerful, just to let you know. Is you have these uh, yeah we have these mapping features that are here right so in the mapping feature you could say hey okay so this is what the SEM image looks like wherever it sees carbon it's going to put a little little orange area wherever it sees manganese it's putting blue wherever it sees aluminum red calcium silica whatever you're looking at but also what's really cool about this too is you could actually pull 